welcome to the Solidarity Podcast. Everyone, welcome to our first episode. So, to give everyone a background about the name of our podcast, we chose the label The Solidarity because first... As we all know, the Solidarity is the English translation for La Solidaridad, right? And it was an organization composed of Filipino liberals and students aiming to increase the Spanish awareness of the needs of its colony, the Philippines, and to propagate a closer relationship between the Philippines and Spain. That's absolutely correct. And La Solidaridad was a officially newspaper of the propaganda movement. They used this as their medium as they aim to seek freedom. Just like the old times, our group also wants to serve as a medium to somehow open the eyes of the blind. Absolutely. But first, I have a question for all of you guys. We all know that Jose Rizal played a big role in La Soledad. But do you think the studying his life and work still bear importance nowadays? Hmm, honestly speaking, I didn't really find it interesting at first. Same talk. I am just here because um, it's just a requirement. Who would have an interest and full attention to this kind of boring subject? Wait, wait, wait. I am pretty sure that was your perspective prior to taking the result course, right? Or... <laughs> <laughs> I know we are all on the same page before. We find it uninteresting and boring, but I'm sure that our perspective had changed as we go along with the different topics. And it's our time now to share the things we have learned. If you are curious enough how to change in our views and perspective happen, please keep in listening and watching. During our result course, we have encountered six modules to be exact. So, for this episode, we will be dealing with each module for us to discuss our own insights and learning. Let us start with module one. And it is all about result law and theory and nationalism and the 19th century Philippines. In this module, there are two different topics. One is about the theory of nationalism and two, the 19th century. So this topic made me realize that everything that happened in the past is still happening in the Philippines today. For example, the hacienda owned by the friars, but in present time, numerous land are owned by the government and not the people who work hard for it. In the past, racial discrimination is very evident. We all know that there are no equality before and even today. The government officials are seen as those people who are superior than the others. It has also made me realize that ever since the law are favoring those people who are currently higher position. And other one, and another one. We know that Noli Metangre and El Filipe Bustarismo exposed the Spanish government and depict violence. In my perspective, it is really saddening to know that even in the present time, this abuse still happen a lot today. The Oplan Tokang, which rolled out shortly after President Rodrigo Duterte became president in June 2016, allows the police to raid suspect homes even at ungodly hours and without warrant. As the president implemented this, the police officer felt the power they handled that led to abuse and killing of the innocents. It is really sad because there are still cases like that even though this is an era, it seems like we did not learn anything from the past. My perspective also changed. As what I have said earlier, I did not really think that Rizal's experiences would mirror ours, but as what you have shared, I now value its importance more. Yeah, my perspective also has changed. And as I realized that there is no difference between the Filipinos in Rizal's time and during our generation, I also feel scared about it. That's why Dr. Jose Rizal made the book to prevent the Spaniards from taking over the Philippines and to give freedom to the people without any violence. People in our generation are still using power to cover up their doing, and that's kind of sad for us. So let's end this topic here. That discussion was so engaging. Let us now proceed with the second module, which is Results Cultural Roots. This module mainly revolves about the abuses of the Spanish friars when it comes to the ownership of lands. So, I know that all of you are aware that ever since the time of Rizal, those in higher position had already practiced the abusive ruling towards Filipinos. As what we have discussed earlier, up until today, this kind of situation is very prevalent, right? Just like recently, an off-duty policeman shot a woman and her son without them doing anything wrong or illegal. 
and his position gave him the power to do so. It is very timely that we are taking the Rizal course when this happened. Upon learning, I realized that if Rizal is still alive and could see how the youth of today's generation fought for justice of both the mother and the son, he would be so proud. It may be too late, we may never bring those lives back, but the courage to stand for what is right is the most important thing. The youth did not show any fear or doubt that people like the policeman would take revenge against us as this issue created a loud noise, especially in the social media platforms. Like in this module, Rizal showed how courageous he was even if the Spanish friars threatened his father. It changed my perspective in a way that I became more brave and prior to taking the Rizal course, I thought that those in higher positions could not really be defeated by some sort of intelligence. Just like how Rizal fought the battles, I thought that maybe violence would finally be a threat for them for it to stop. But taking this course, I was able to realize that there may be other mediums that have been developed nowadays. That does not mean that being intellectual would not bear anything. Unlike in Rizal's time, his writings were his main weapon. And today, we are lucky enough to have different social media platforms for us to vo voice for what is right. And I was able to value it more after reading the life and works of Rizal. I totally agree, and that issue made me so angry. It is good to know that we have taken this course because who knows, without Rizal being our example, um, we may just sit there and be scared of those officials. Honestly, because of Rizal, I was able to voice out my opinions regarding that kind of issue. I know, I know the impact of my voice as I fight for what is right. I also agree, Rizal taught us to be fearless, but the most important thing I learned is that he was able to show the importance of fighting wisely. As we all know, he stood tall with his pen and paper. To be honest, hearing this on the news for the first time made me scared. However, I thought of what our national hero instilled in us. I was able to help myself in understanding the importance of fighting instead of tolerating them. Um, wait guys, let us calm ourselves because there are still numbers of modules to be discussed. To start with the third one entitled Results National Consciousness. Now this time let's talk about module 3 which discusses the national consciousness of Result and how it came about. There were many occurrences in Rizal's life that made him realize the state of the Philippines during the Spanish colonial era. His higher education, his life abroad, and the propaganda movement. These occurrences changed my perspective on how to show nationalism and how to love our country. This module displayed the events in Rizal's life wherein he himself got aware of what is happening around him. If I were able to compare how Rizal became conscious of what is happening today, I will connect I would connect his experiences to the situation of the youth. The youth today must have awareness of what is happening around them. They must know what is right and what to fight for. Today, the youth isn't blinded by the Spaniards' rule. Rather, they are blinded by the society, the norms, and the beliefs that they think are right but are actually wrong and immoral. I made this connection because I think that the influence that the society has on us is more critical because it does not only affect the way we act, but the way we think as well. We must think like Rizal. If he can do it, so can we. We have the power to change the world. The youth is privileged with the freedom that was given by our national heroes. And they expect us to make this world a better place for us and for the future generations to come. That was very inspiring, Michael. I hope the youth could realize what really is happening around them just like Rizal did during the colonization. Rizal is counting on us, make every action meaningful and impactful. He did not just inspire, inspire the Filipinos during the colonization. He inspired a lot of youth today as well. And it's just amazing to think that his work and his contribution to the country still affect how we choose to live our life as of this moment. Rizal is truly an influencer. We must follow. I waited long enough to discuss my insights regarding the fourth module, which is Search for Filipino Origins. This module changed my perspective because this presents a different perspective of Philippine history prior to the arrival of the Spanish colonizers. It explicitly showed that we, we have already established our own identity even before the Spaniards came. However, due to various instances, our tradition and norms changed. For an instance, the coronavirus disease 
pandemic has forced every, everyone to change the way we interact with each other. It has made us modify the platforms on how we were conduct conference and social meetings. And it has drastically reshaped our traditional manner of greeting and saying farewell. The, the conventional handshake is no more. We may never get to experience rituals like those that Sikatuna entered into nor get to the simple traditional firm handshake in the, de- in the near future. But there are the reaction and emotion buttons on our computers and smartphones that one can choose from click it, click if you want to send a kiss or a hug or to show approval or disapproval. There are even a way of signing agreement, agreements virtually. We are now living in, ge- in the generation of virtual reality. In today's time, the pre-conquest past is seen as something that would awaken Filipinos regarding their glorious ways of, past, of the past. Yet that it had proven that Filipinos were civilized even before the coming of Spaniards. This can be viewed as something that would help Filipinos to propagate their love for the fatherland, same as how Rizal saw it. I additionally conquer. Rizal instructed us to be friendly. In any case, the main thing I learned is that he had the option to show the significance of battling a suit a I agree, JC. Human civilization is built around the wisdom of the past. They may become obsolete over time, but nonetheless act as the groundwork of the future. Um, great! He's part of the people's expression. Thinks of the future, especially, especially the future generation. Very well said. Dr. Rosario Sal is a good influence to us. Through his writing, he inspired us Filipinos, just like saying the pen was fighter than sword. That was so true. Results change in perspective on the Spanish role in the in this fifth module. Anyone who wants to start discussing this? Me first. Um, Rizal is really devoted to changing the country for the better. He pointed out many things that the Spaniards lacked in doing. His reason on why he abandoned assimilation is something to point out because he really did it for the sake of all those who are unlucky and poor. This inspired me to do the same today for I must do anything in my will to contribute for the change Rizal was expecting when he chose to fight for us. Hmm, also, Filipinos are indolent. How are they able to say that if they themselves did not give the Filipinos the chance to work properly with enough compensation? In this module, I realized that it was not really the Filipinos who are indolent. It is the people who depend and give them orders. The Spaniards are not the ones that are indolent. Why would they take? Why would they treat the Filipinos as their slaves? I think that. I think that Dr. Salazar felt pain, hatred, and all other emotion, despite all the problems he took. But he still found light and courage that there is still hope for a better tomorrow that will be in the future. That's that's what I see for our fellow Filipinos right now. Despite of the hardship that's happening to, to uh, despite of the hardship that's happening to them, they still hope that tomorrow will be better. I realized that today we see many results fighting for our people. This time against unseen adversary, a pandemic, we have we have our brave frontliners who continue to serve the nation in their unique capacities, notwithstanding the risks of life of life of this life to and live in them. We see new expression of heroism and truly inspired. We are down to the last module. I still don't want this episode to end, but I would like to initiate in sharing my thoughts in Module 6, entitled Rizal Heroism, The Nation, and the World. In this module, we learned about the rigorous journey of Rizal from his fight for freedom and democracy to his execution. Also, the influences of his writing that made impact the social changes and affected political agendas back at the time. We discovered how Rizal nationalism and heroic deeds in the past contributed to Philippine independence and the values he portrayed become part of our culture since then. Not just that, we also saw how Rizal is more than what we know. May it be in his education or his passion in writing that motivated revolution against colonizers. Truly, he already cemented himself as our national hero, especially now we are facing adversities. 
surviving in this pandemic, may we all be reminded to be steadfast. Cliche as it may sound, but Rizal didn't die for us to be divisive. As Filipinos, we should keep our heads up high because bright days will soon come, just like the way Rizal bravely fought for the Philippines. Exactly. And the thing like this made Filipinos is part to do the same. Maybe not as heroic as he did, but him as a reflection of what Filipinos have begun is already enough. Until now, we still look up to him. All our actions are elevated by his life and he had offered to us. I couldn't agree more. It is very evident how Rizal's legacy has imparted a lot in our daily lives. Indeed, but I would say Rizal's heroism does not end in his death. It's our responsibility to give the future generation something to look forward to. Great point, because the future relies, relies on us. So we must remember to honor our national hero constantly. So let us end the discussion with this. The importance of Rizal's ideas for our generation has a twofold basis. First, the applicability to present day problems. And second, the inspirational value. Rizal holds a mirror to our face and we see ourselves, our vices, our defects, our meanness. Because the condition he described are the very condition we see around us. And the characters he portrays are people we continue to meet. One hand holds a mirror to shame us and the other points the way to our regeneration. Yet the truth is that the mirror was not meant to reveal our image, but the image of the people and the society of Rizal time. I, I wish we had more time to discuss this further. Me too. I thought I already knew everything, but I was definitely wrong. I hope we guys could do this again some other time. Yes, surely. I hope that we somehow help our viewers and listeners. As what this podcast aims to, we want other people to be awakened with the importance of Dr. Jose Rizal even in present times. Thank you for spending your time with us. We also hope that you enjoyed learning from us. Again, this is the Solidarity Podcast.